Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today working on my Beetle, my 1956 Beetle right over here known as Eleanor. Well, I've been having problems with my GoPro and the GoPro is notorious for gobbling up audio, but today, it, during all the progress that I was recording, it decided to uh, this time just gobble up all the data on it. I, I should have, in hindsight, done a little better um, data uh, recovery and attempted to, to recover the data from the SD card, but I was just so pissed off at the thing that I just formatted it, stuffed it back in the camera and tried recording, and now it's fine. So it was probably just the SD card, or maybe the SD card just wasn't set up properly. Maybe the, the, the GoPro corrupted it, or maybe the memory card reader that I slapped it into corrupted it. I don't care. I'm an IT guy. Certainly I could fix it, but I just, I was so pissed off at the thing that I just didn't bother. Anyways, we're going to make this a very quick video. I'm going to do a quick summary. We're going to have a walk around here and show you a little bit about what I was working on today and uh, where we're at, as well as how these hinges just would not work. I mean, everybody was absolutely right once again. But right after the intro, we're going to discuss that. So please check out, check out duckshit.net if you want to see all my different social media links. And join me, follow me, you know, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And don't forget to licky likey on this video and leave a comment. If you got a question about something, I'll try to cover it in my Q&A video, which uh, hopefully we'll have one up tomorrow. Thanks for watching. We'll be back right after the intro. Well, I did at least have one person say the last couple days that um, putting those hinges on there is a complete butcher job, and it's a hack job, and it's ugly, and why the hell would you do that? You know, it's just it's stupid. You know, the hinges on a Lexus are so much better. It's a f***ing Lexus. <laughs> this is a Beetle from 1956. Of course it's crude. Hell, it was crude when it got started. But I put on typical hot rod hinges that you'll find on any, you know, Ford Plymouth or Chevy or whatever you got. Anytime somebody tries to hide some hinges, that's what you're going to find is what you see on here. And that's exactly what I used. Is it a butcher hack job? Sure it is. Of course it is. The whole damn car is. I mean, you saw what I started out with. I mean, you guys have been following since the beginning. You know that I had a terrible, terrible car. And uh, once again, I'm explaining it, but I, I just thought it was funny. It's more motivation. That what I'm doing here is terrible. It's going to be ugly. It's just, oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait until we have a look. All right, well, we are back. This is the hinge set. Both the hinge pockets are attached to a uh, common rod that's in between them. Now, I was looking at the set that's currently installed. One of the things that I noticed when I had it laying out on my cutting mat, that when I opened and closed them, that they didn't remain square, that they would splay out. And after I closed them, they would then go back into proper position. So after getting a little more close of a look at this, and I had a piece of hardened steel rod, I slid them through here just like this. There it goes. And much to my surprise, yeah, look at that. The alignment is way off. It's off on two axes. And I can't just, you know, bend it and shove it in there because this rod is not supposed to be bent. This is supposed to be as straight as possible. Both of these hinges have to turn on that same axis. Otherwise, what's going to happen is as you open and close the door, the hinges are going to bind or they're going to start squealing. It's it. They're going to act choppy. You open it and it's going to chatter. That's wrong. So anyway, um, yeah, yeah. Both sides are off for exactly the same reason. If I pull this rod out and I feed it through the other direction, it aligns with three of the pivot points, no problem. The fourth one is the one that's off. And if you look at it, you can actually see that it's up a little higher than the rest. So what I'm gonna do is same as I did on the other one. I'm gonna cut this weld out of here and I'm gonna push this rod through so that way it gets them all aligned. And then with the rod in there, I'll weld around the edge here and that's what I did on the other set of hinges that are currently installed. So anyway, that was one of the things that I dealt with today that really pissed me off. But it turned out it actually wasn't that bad. I was going to put it in a vise and try to bend it. But looking at these boxes, you can just see that they're, they're not straight. They're actually just, they're all twisted and tweaked and just built really screwy. But if I get that pivot right, there's enough room inside the pocket for that hinge to sit in there and it has enough room to, to move around no matter which way I change this to, as long as I don't go too extreme. But just enough to get them in alignment should be enough to do it. So that is what I did there to modify that to make that fit. You probably also notice here, here's a set of beetle hinges. 
These are Eleanor's original hinges right here. I actually cut them off of uh, Eleanor's old door, which is right over there currently being used as a table. But the reason why I did that was, and you're gonna love this, <laughs> because I made a door template. Yes, that's what you see right here. Something to make test fitment. This I knew was gonna have the right contour and the correct shape on it. So that way I could go ahead and get the door mounted and fit. Now currently it's only clamped to the hinges. I used a piece of wood down here for a spacer up on the top. I didn't need one because remember the door bows out in such a way that uh, it's got some odd fitment. But looking at the door right here, you notice I can open it and it hits the gutter. Now that's to be expected. The gutter is actually going to be removed. I might tweak the hinge a little bit. I think I'll probably move it just a couple millimeters closer to me so that way it has just a little bit more of a comfortable space through here. I don't want to have it accidentally chip off paint, especially after I'm spending all that money having Earl do my beautiful paint work on this car. I want this thing to be right and I don't want it to have a problem again down in the future. So one of the things that I will be doing is cut the gutter off of here and then, like I said, I'll move the hinges over just a little bit. I might even push them into the door a little further because that will change where the fulcrum is at and change how they pivot. But they only need to open to 62 and a half degrees. I actually measured it on a stock beetle. I still have the white beetle here. And with the check strap in place, I measured against the heater channel and then put it against the door and I got 62 and a half degrees. So that actually worked out kind of well. As a result then, I went ahead and made a mark on the hinges inside here to figure out exactly how far that door is going to open to. But what gets even better than that is that it didn't even matter because once I get everything open to where it's supposed to be, I get the full 90 degrees out of it. They open up straight away and all the way. Now some people had said, Duckman, your door is never going to open. Duckman, your door is never going to close. Well, I just demonstrated it both open and closed. And the last thing I was told is, hey, Duckman, it's not going to clear the front fender. And it clears it by a lot. And it's currently at its stops at 90 degrees. Now, I don't plan on keeping the doors open to 90 degrees. I plan on stopping them at the 62 and a half degrees with a check strap, or at least with the, uh, the bumpers that, that go inside of these hinges that are in here. But when I have it all said and done, I might actually go with the 90 degrees. It's kind of nice that it does that. And um, just set the bumpers on the inside of the door so they stop at 90 degrees. But yeah, this is an old piece of Eleanor's door and that really got the job done over here so I could test things and, and make sure the fitment works because I had nothing else that had all those contours and shapes. And I tried to cut some pieces of wood and I said, what the hell am I doing? I have a door that's rotted out. Let me just do that. I don't need the whole damn door. I just need the front of it just to make sure that the hinges fit. And of course I have one for the uh, driver's side also. So I'll, I'll be using that just the same when I get over there. But once I've got this one figured out and I get my measurements off of it, the driver's side is going to be really easy. But currently the hinges are just kind of tacked in in a couple locations. I'll show you what we're doing over here. Yeah, currently the hinges are just tacked in in a couple spots. I put a little weld here and I put a weld there and there's a weld there and there's a weld up underneath there. And that's got it held in place. You can see how clean everything looks. This box that you see sticking out here is actually going to be cut off and welded flush with the A-pillar. So that's going to work out. And then of course these holes for the screws, I'll patch all that and make it disappear. I don't want anybody to have any idea that uh, the old hinges were ever even there. So that's part of the plan that we've got here. And I'm really, really happy with what's going on. Uh, this is turning out really well. I mean, so many people told me this wasn't gonna work and looking at what it got here, I mean, hey, I just showed it working. <laughs> the only thing I haven't shown is any weight on it, but I don't see any reason why these big heavy duty hinges won't be able to support the weight, especially since I'm using all the stock locations where the old hinge is bolted to. There's a big reinforced piece of metal that runs the full length of the A-pillar. And um, it's not just flat, it's, it's bowed out. And it has a bunch of dimples in it, which of course makes it even stronger with all the different contours to it. And this all attaches to it and that bar that's in between these two hinge pockets, I'm gonna weld it to the inside of that just the same, just to build up as much strength on it as I possibly can. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of welding on this. I'm not the least bit concerned about it being soft, flimsy, or flexible, or the door is sagging in any way. In fact, one of the problems that usually happens on stock beetles is the water gets down here from the weep holes in the windshield, and it rots out the lower hinge, or even worse yet, it gets the bottom of the A-pillar area right here at the door, and takes out the heater channel. Once that section breaks, this whole A-pillar will swing around. And when you go to close your door, well, when you go to open the door, it falls down. It'll actually drop. And when you go to close it, you have to lift it up just a hair. And that's because the entire body is flexing. 
with the way I've got this set up now, that should not be affected quite so easily because a lot of the forces are going to be spread out over the length of the A-pillar versus just on the bottom and just on the top. So <laughs> I'm really, really happy with what I got. I mean, I've said that a couple times, but yeah, this, is, um, this has really made me feel good. I wish I had some more tech to show you guys. Really, I do. But just, uh, yeah, just I had all them damn camera problems today. Just nothing worked out. Oh, the other problem was my microphone to my good camcorder, it decided to kick the bucket. I don't know what the hell happened to it. I went to hit the button to power it on. It wouldn't power on. I plugged it in the charger, let it sit for a few minutes, hit the button to power it on, still won't power on. When it was plugged into the charger, I tried to power it on. It still wouldn't power on. So anyway, I'm going to have to figure that one out. I just plugged it in the charger, the charge light's on, and I'm going to leave it in there for about 30 minutes to an hour. I'll check it again later and just see if it's a battery problem or if something internally is going to reset from just having sat for a little while. I've seen my stupid cell phones do that sometimes. They just go stupid, and you shut them off, and you plug them in the charger, and they still don't turn on, and you let them sit for a little while, and they still don't turn on. But if you let them sit long enough, suddenly they turn themselves on, and everything's fine. And I might be experiencing something like that with that... Uh, with the microphone receiver. It's, it's a wireless microphone, by the way. Yep, we're gonna keep on playing with this stuff here. Look at what we got. Get that thing to clear that gutter. And of course, I'm going to uh, oh, just flex the hell out of the thing. There we go. And of course, I'm gonna make some adjustments to this gutter here and get this thing uh, all cut off. I'm gonna to try to bring these hinges maybe just a couple more millimeters this way if I have any more clearance issues, but I think that pretty much in summary is going to cover just about everything that, that, uh, that I've done here and what I'm going to be doing in the, in the very, very, very near future, probably as soon as tomorrow. I might get out here and start working on this thing and uh, I think I might just be skipping the GoPro entirely or maybe I'll do a test run with it first before I just hit the record button and expect it to work properly. I also can't wait to weld this close. You can't believe how much structural integrity this nothing but piece of sheet metal, and that's all it is, it's a piece of sheet metal with a few curves and contours in it, but how much uh, structural integrity it has. But now that it's not in there as it should be, you, if you look all the way down there to the end of the front fender here, let's see, way down there, if I flex this, it moves all the way to there. So yeah, I definitely need to get that fixed, and I can't wait to get that fixed. Thankfully, it doesn't look like it's uh, it's moved any. These gaps that are in here are the same width as the saw blade, so everything should uh, should lay flat as it was. I'll get some clamps on here and hold it together and fill the welds in. I, I'm just really excited to get that fixed more than anything else here because that I didn't want to make that cut. I really didn't want to make that cut, but I ended up having to. So, well, that's just the way life goes, right? <laughs> Well, as always, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time that I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out duckshit.net where all my social media links are at. You need to check that out for sure. Check out my Instagram. I got over a thousand followers on there and it's still growing. It's still growing. So don't stop getting over there and, and checking it out. I uploaded some photos of this thing today in progress because when I saw that the videos weren't going to work out, I thought photos were going to be all I had. So you certainly want to check that out. If I don't get a video up, I, I try to put up some photos or something else on there in my posts. So, um... Thanks for watching, guys. Really do appreciate you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Licky likey, subby subby. Comment. Appreciate it. See you next time. Well, for those of you that wanted to see down the inside, that's what it looks like. And, of course, the hinge moves. Can't really see. Well, you can see the other one. There you go. That's about as far in as the camera can get, though. But, yeah, there it is. All right, we'll keep working on this thing tomorrow. Thanks for watching, you guys. Oh, what everybody seems to forget is that I'm the motherfucking duck man.